I've always been deeply opposed to crypto, Bitcoin, et cetera. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering, tax avoidance, and that is a use case. Uh, because it is somewhat anonymous, not fully, and because you can move money instantaneously, and because it doesn't go through, as you mentioned, all these systems have been built up over many years, know your customers, sanctions, OFAC, it's, they can get bypass all of that. I, if I was the government, I'd close it down. Okay. Crypto. If you mean crypto like Bitcoin, I've always said it's a fraud. Uh, so are, no hope for it. Well, if, it's, if they think they're a currency, there's no hope for it. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's a public decentralized Ponzi scheme. Diamond says Bitcoin is a fraud. He says he'll fire anyone of his traders buying Bitcoin. Bitcoin drops 24%. When Jamie Diamond speaks, people listen. People listen. So that weekend, we found out that the largest buyer of a, of a Bitcoin fund that's in Europe that buys physical Bitcoin, right? The largest buyer was Morgan Stanley and JP Morgan. And that's not illegal. He says it's a fraud. It says he'd buy anyone that buys it. Yes. And at the same time, his company is buying His company is going to a different economy. And we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance, agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity. And as an American, you know, uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. The Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're going to get more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told us members that this has been part of the reason
reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy. And, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. I hate when countries go off the dollar. I would not allow countries to go off the dollar because when we lose that standard, that will be like uh, losing a revolutionary war. That will be that will be a hit to our country, just like losing a war. And we can't let that happen. And too many countries now are fighting to get off the dollar. Welcome, Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. Teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Please inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works, because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New Road Order book. Remember, the New Road Order book shows you how the world really works, and it is definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now. And 2024 is going to be one of our most entertaining years. We have the presidential election. We have the drums of beating. We have the emerging markets going to be flipping the switch on the fourth industrial revolution. Now, we had the Fed signal rate cuts, but remember, guys, they haven't cut rates yet. So we know the massive magicians are about to set up that distraction. So therefore, they can cut rates while we still have inflation. And in the fourth quarter, once the election is over, we know the movie begins. And also, guys, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids' books. It's time to re-educate. Also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop Patreon. Much love. Keep it coming. Guys, if you're not a part of the Patreon, make sure you're donating to the channel through the actual Cash App. But guys, this next Bitcoin and crypto bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure you have the cryptos that have real utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And right now, we have Bitcoin and crypto bouncing after the pullback. But guys, we know on the weekend, we're the only game in town. Now, we have Jack Dorsey says Bitcoin price will go beyond $1 in 2030. And if Bitcoin is the ledger for the machines, it can definitely go way over that. But guys, we know the only thing we do is follow the Fed. We follow the plan. We don't need predictions. We know where this is headed. The fourth industrial revolution. And remember, the crypto teacher told you. Now, guys, do not forget to pay attention to the actual indicators. We have yield rates, which were up on Friday. We had the dollar, which was up on Friday. We have volume in crypto right now flat. We have Tether and USDC. And then we have the Fed. Repo at $486 billion. And we see the central bank's plan working. We see this global economy crumbling. Remember, we're in a fragmented world. Everything has to be destroyed in order for the machines to rise. First, they told us printing all this money wasn't going to cause inflation. Then we get the inflation. Now they raise the rates so fast to fight the inflation, not giving the rates time to seep into the economy. Now they're seeping in. Now it's crushing small and medium-sized businesses and the consumer. And these small and medium-sized banks are set up to fail. And once these small and medium-sized banks fall, small businesses fall, and that means unemployment rises. We're already seeing unemployment rise. But right now, it's the big tech, big money, six-figure people losing their jobs. Now you're going to start seeing the middle class being hollowing out. Like Klaus stated, the World Economic Forum along with Biden. 
the robots, algorithms, and drones are ready to take over the economy. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now we have the spot Bitcoin ETFs. We have BlackRock, Fidelity, and Grayscale. We're all down. And we have BlackRock and Fidelity ETFs at 10 billion assets under management in weeks instead of years, breaking the record. Also, we have Wells Fargo reports exposure to Grayscale and ProShares Bitcoin ETFs. And I'm going to get into that later. And we have ARK Invest and 21 shares cut staking component from latest spot Bitcoin ETF filing. And we know there's going to be some drama around staking. And remember the crypto teacher told you, but we know it's not going anywhere. We can clearly see that in Europe and the emerging markets. Now getting over into a little crypto news. We have Salo Community approves plan to use Optimism OP stack for new layer 2 chain. Now we have BlockFi to shut down web platform this month and will let users access funds via Coinbase. Now we have Mark Cuban says crypto will play a big role in the 2024 presidential election. And we know presidents are selected, not elected. And because of the fourth industrial revolution, we see Mark Cuban reinventing himself for this new digital economy. Sales majority of the stake in his basketball team turns around Gets into the online pharmacy business, carbon credits. He is definitely set up to win. And lastly, we have Jamie Dimon pulls it off again. JP Morgan discloses spot Bitcoin ETFs investments in BlackRock, Fidelity, and Bitwise. And don't forget that BlackRock made JP Morgan and the other big banks authorized participants. So it all makes sense. But guys, we know where this is headed. The fourth industrial revolution. This is a plan. It moves in phases. And you cannot expect these fund managers, these billionaires to tell you the truth. And you definitely don't expect it from the mainstream media. You have to do your research and follow the money. Remember, guys, my people perish from the lack of knowledge because they reject it. And I know you probably educated plenty of friends and family on crypto. And now the NWO is ready to flip the switch on these digital assets. And by the time the sheep wake up, the machines would have already taken over the economy. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. But that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books. Crypto teacher and the new world order book. Plus the three kids, books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, BitChute, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get home stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. Most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. 
part one. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part two. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID 33. Part three. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.